Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching in the world. And this is the fifth installment of trying to determine who Wrexham is playing. Why do we like you? Why do we hate you? Who are you? So, Barrow, we'll see you on Saturday. The question is... Let's get into it. Welcome to the Red Horde. If you haven't seen the previous versions of our Who Are You series, they're definitely there for you to go back. Feel free to watch this one if you enjoyed it. Um, go back and see the other ones. Like, comment, subscribe. It means a lot. Lots. The hours are up. Looking for those subscription buttons. So if you get the chance right now, click on that. Again, we run the watch parties. Uh, we will be there to watch the Wrexham Barrow match. We won't be streaming it, of course, but we've got the chat online. You can sit there and watch, join in the fun, have a conversation, express your opinions, talk about the goals. It was a lot of fun last time. Uh, viewership dropped off given the first half and man, they came screaming back in a hurry. So join us for the watch party. Link is below. Uh, you'll be able to figure all of that out. So we've got Barrow. Um, and I'm going to start with something I haven't done before, and I'm going to go back to the Swindon game and give a, a section of an interview that Parkinson talked about, because as you're going to see from the statistical information, Barrow has a pretty obvious strength when it comes to scoring goals and seemingly how they're going to play the game against us, and uh, it might pose some problems with uh, our style. So, here's what Parky had to say. Um, stopping crosses and defending your box and blocking shots in the edge of the box. As simple as that. We spoke about it during the week um, and too many crosses came in, too many headers were lost in the, in the middle of the goal. Um, and, you know, if you know, it's a windy day and, and we're not passing the ball with Christmas we'd like, but you stand strong as a, as a group, um, you know, then you can make an indifferent performance okay and get to half time and you know we've got to be honest and say that we've got a lot of work to do as a group every single one of us um, we need a good week on the training pitch we need to review everything now if you missed it what was he talking about there that's relevant when it pertains to barrel crosses as you're going to see when the stats come out, there is an obvious way that Barrow gets to goal, and that is they have a high cross completion rate, and they have some giants up front. It's going to pose a challenge, and so I hope they got that practice in on the pitch. But before we get into that and start looking at the stats, let's go back and talk about, well, just who is Barrow anyway? Barrow, known as the Bluebirds, located in Barrow in Cumbria. So we're going north for this one. Population 56,745. The stadium, Holker Street, opened in 1909 and has a capacity of 6,500, 2,249 being seated. Uh, they averaged attendance last year of 3,492, so that put them 19th out of the 24 teams that were in League Two last season. Distance away from the race course, 135 miles or 217 kilometers. Let's take a little trip on the Google Earth as we go over that. That's a travel time of 2 hours and 20 minutes. As the Google Earth spins, you can see it located up there. And uh, we'll bring a picture up as soon as it stops spinning so that you can have a look at the stadium that is Holker Street. And from there, what's interesting is, is this is the first club that I wasn't able to ascertain or determine from the company's records, the company's house or otherwise, exactly what the turnover is for Barrow. So a little bit of the unknown there. I'm going to have to try and dig that up later. I find that a little bit odd. So the history of the Bluebirds. They joined the EFL in 1921 and from there they stayed in the bottom level of competition until 1967 where they saw their promotion into the third tier where they stayed until 1971-72 and eventually they fell down into the National League where they spent, hold on for a second, a whopping 48 seasons in a row in non-league football. Conference, National League, call it what you will. They were stuck there for three times longer than Wrexham, which must have felt like an eternity. Wow. But promoted in out of the National League uh, into the EFL in the 2019-2020 truncated, truncated COVID season. They made their way back up and they've just avoided relegation since then, essentially, uh, other than last year. 21st in 2020, 2021, 22nd the year after that. And then last year, they did a lot better. Um, finishing in ninth place. So let's have a look at their kit here. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I have a small, a soft spot for teams that are smaller, but when it comes to your kit, the kit history looks like um, something you would anticipate from a thrift store and just going in and finding a box of jerseys and pulling them out and saying, this is what we're going to go with. Like the history of 
the kit for Barrow. It's had blue in every shade you can imagine, yellow, green, pink, um, basically slap a different sponsor on it, let it go run out and, and see how the team does. This year, uh, it's again, eclectic. The home jer sorry, the away jersey is white with a blue stripe down the side. It basically looks like a Finnish flag where the away jerseys, the black one with a lightning bolt down it. I don't see uh, a connection between them, uh, I, but then I guess that's par for the course because Barrow really hasn't had a connection in any of the jer jerseys they've had in the past. You guys need somebody there to help you with your kit. I don't know who that is, where you find them. Jersey Bird, maybe. Uh, they do some crazy stuff. But anyways, got to work on that. Bookie odds have them placed in 17th. Uh, that's a bottom one-third club. Their performance so far this season has been much better than that. Two wins, one draw, one loss. They're presently tied for fourth place with five other teams. Uh, the first game was a win against Tranmere away. Second game, a 2-1 win over Sutton uh, United at home. Sutton United was down for a man for much of that match. Barrow was able to uh, take away the win. Uh, third game was a 1-1 draw with Accrington Stanley, and that one was away. And then the fourth game, a 1-0 loss to Stockport. And maybe somewhat concerning is Barrow seems to, at least statistically, be underperforming. That is to say, the expected goals per match, you know, the calculation of corners, passing, shots on goal, uh, all of those opportunities, fouls, lead to a calculation of how many goals can be expected from one team. Their number? 1.36 goals per match. Perhaps more concerning is that it's 2.13 goals expected per game at home. And when you compare that to the, what they're actually scoring per match, that is expected to be a little bit higher than they're actually obtaining. So there may be some more that you can get out of barrel, which hopefully doesn't happen this weekend. Ugh, crosses coming in. We'll get into that. Now the expected goals. This one will be uh, a tougher match than it was probably drawn up when the schedule first came out. And in, in addition to that, they just signed uh, Sam Bellis, who is a player who's uh, been cast out and uh, they've snapped him up. So I'm not sure if he'll have enough time to make it into the roster, the lineup for Saturday. But really when it comes to the forwards, it's led by three guys. But let me just go over the statistics because we've talked crosses and it's obvious and apparent because when you have this lineup, you know what's going to end up happening. Aqua, he's six foot three. Proctor, six foot two. Canavan, six foot three. There are other two backups uh, that are potentially available to them. Garner, six foot two. Duf Dufus, Duffus, six foot two. So you've got big bodies standing up front. Aqua, he was a transfer from Maidenhead uh, in, the, in the National League. Just as a consequence of that, there's not a lot of analytical stats to go through. But he is doing uh, quite well as far as his goals this year, above average in scoring and involvement so far this year. Jamie Proctor, 31 years of age. He was one of the Port Vale players who decided to come down to League Two and play for Barrow. Uh, limited times, early days, but I will say one thing is his statistics look like he should be a defender. His aerial duels numbers are awesome off the charts. He's not in the 97th percentile as a forward. Ground duels, 90th percentile. His passing, 15th percentile pass completion rate. Dribbling success rate percentage a little lower than what would be expected at 11th percent. But look, this is why I think this is the strategy is you've got these guys up there with center back type stats up against the center backs. Tozer, if he starts, whoever's in the middle better be ready because uh, they're going to be in the air a lot, I think, come Saturday. Um, Again, uh, Canavan, 32 years of age, more aerial duels, 96th percentile when it comes to uh, air success in aerial duels, but the remainder of the stats are a little bit low. Predictable, right? I think. I guess we'll see uh, Saturday. Looking then to Barrow's midfielders, and really you have three players that are leading the charge, both as far as minutes played and sort of quality of statistics. You've got two more of the offensive midfielders, the first being Dean Campbell, a 22-year-old find out of Aberdeen in the, in the Scottish Premiership. He's seemingly found uh, a way in Barrow. He's 86 percentile when it comes to crosses and cross completion. Uh, 3.6 attempts per 90 minutes. His pass completion stats a little bit low. He's in the 48th percentile uh, and 75th percentile when it comes to attempted passes. In addition to him, you have David Worrell, uh, 33 years of age, 355 minutes played. He stepped down from League One in Port Vale to join Barrow and another player with exceptional crosses, 98th percentile with his cross completion and 12.5 attempted crosses per 90 minutes. That's a lot. Parkey wanted to defend him and see if Wrexham could do a better job. 
we're going to get tested. Tom White is the other midfielder. He's at 26, 359 minutes. From the statistics, I'm going to assume that he's playing more in a defensive midfielder role. Uh, he's not been involved in the scoring yet. Um, in fact, he hasn't tried any crosses. He's, he does have some decent stats in defense. His ground duels and interceptions are certainly there. Um, and he's 70th percentile in successful passes with a healthy number of passes, which makes me think he's more towards the back and starting to build up the play through the midfield. So those are the top three. You have other players back there. Uh, Kean Spence, 22. He's got 267 minutes trying to find his legs. Uh, not really great statistics, but he's got a goal and an assist, which puts him in the 95th percentile when it comes to uh, contribution towards goals. Uh, the other uh, defender that you've got, or sorry, other midfielder you've got, Elliot Newby, 27. He's got 262 minutes. He's appeared in five games, three with starts, uh, but doesn't score a lot. He's got three t three goals in 2020, 2021, and and 2021, 2022, and then last year he only scored twice. So he hasn't found the net, hasn't taken any shots. His cross completion rate though is in the 83rd percentile, which uh, is still pretty good, but not anywhere close to David Worrell or Dean Campbell that we were going through. Looking at the defenders then, George Ray, 29 years old, a Welshman, 416 minutes he's played so far this season. Impressive in the air, 99th percentile. This is what Barrow does, is I just expect the ball not to touch the ground as far as what their preference is and their desires are going for, forward this, this match. A week on the ground and passing is Mr. Ray, so that fits the narrative that uh, we've been reviewing the entire time. Tyrell Warren, 24, 302 minutes. Uh, great defensive stats, really 71st percentile or better in all major categories. So he's probably looking to build a case for more time on the pitch. And so far this season has done that. So I would expect that those are the three that we would anticipate in the back for Barrow. And then that leaves us just with the goalkeepers and I don't know, flip a coin as to who we get. You've got Paul Farman, 33. He's played 270 minutes. You've got Josh Lillis. He's played 180 minutes. I would tend to think that Farman's got a leg up here but uh we won't know until the lineup is announced and uh we'll figure it out and so barrow if we're going to compare them to a north american franchise you've obviously got to go with a northern team that maybe doesn't have a history of substantive success so the nba you're looking at the portland trailblazers in hockey you may be looking at the buffalo sabers baseball the milwaukee brewers football the Detroit Lions and those are probably the North American comparatives I'd give to them and of course we've been doing food we've done uh, marshmallows and other things and this one should be obvious as this video has definitely had a theme barrel hot cross buns so there you have it the quick summary of the match the lead up to barrow we'll try to make a prediction for this one you know what i'm going to end up saying because the Rexham matches tend to be high scoring that this one's going to have to be a 3-2 win for us to take this one away uh we need to get start getting some three points together here. As much as it's nice not to have dropped one for a while, uh, we need to start collecting some points. And, and this isn't disrespectful to Barrow by any stretch of the imagination. And especially because, as John identified, when I get critical, the team tends to underperform. So let's keep the superstition going of me not being critical and Wrexham playing well. Um, so I'm going to go with a 3-2 score. Join the watch party. Uh, we'll be there at Saturday. This will play in advance again prior to it. We'll, we'll be there to chat. Um, there's an embedded chat. You can talk about your opinion, your thoughts, your goals. It's a lot of fun, a lot of chaos. It's been impressive to me to end up seeing people from Wrexham who can hear the actual match going on, can't pick it up on TV, and they end up getting updates from a Canadian who's watching over the internet on about four minute, five minute delay before it gets back to them. But it's been a lot of fun. So keep that growing. We're going to do that. Hit the subscribe button below and I will see you Saturday, seven o'clock in the morning, my time, uh, 10 o'clock in the East, uh, three o'clock for those of you out in Wales, the UK, England, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for this. This is the Red Horde.